to Polo! My name is Emma and today I am filming a super fun bookshelf scavenger hunt. If you aren't following me on Instagram yet, I definitely recommend doing so because my stories are where I am most active. But I had asked you guys to send me prompts for books that I could find on my bookshelves. But I wanted to make sure I didn't know the prompts beforehand so I couldn't think of what books I wanted to use for them. So I actually had my boyfriend Jake pick out all of the prompts. So thank you all to everyone who submitted some. There were like way too many for me to include in this video but I'm hoping that Jake picked out some good ones. So I'm going to be using your prompts to find some books on my bookshelves. And speaking of finding new books, I want to give a big thank you to today's video sponsor which is Book of the Month. Book of the Month is a super well-known subscription service. Every month their team vets hundreds of books to give you the best choices of new releases that are coming out and every month you have the opportunity to have one shipped directly to your door. I've always appreciated Book of the Month's detail to not only highlighting a lot of new and emerging authors but they also make sure that every month there is a book choice for everyone regardless of what kind of books you like to read. So there is always like a romance pick, a science fiction or fantasy, they have a lot of thrillers which tend to be some of my favorites, historical fiction, contemporary, and so many more. They are also risk-free so you can skip a month at any time with no penalty for you. So I'm going to show you their choices for their December box. Book of the Month always kills it with their choices but this month I particularly think they picked like five of the most beautiful covers to include. First up we have People Like You by Ellery Lord and this seems to be a thriller about a mommy blogger who is rising to success posting her family on the internet and so this creates a rift in her marriage but as well she is also dealing with a lot of obsessive followers and one who might be very dangerous and want to bring her down. Then in the holiday spirit we have have In a Holidays by Christina Lauren and this seems to be a Groundhog Day type story about a young woman who is spending her last Christmas at a cabin that she has grown up going to for the holidays every year and as they are leaving it appears that she gets stuck in a cycle of going over the holidays at this cabin over and over and over again. Then we have The Wife Upstairs by Rachel Hawkins, which is kind of like a modern remix of the story of Jane Eyre. It follows a young broke dog walker in an affluent neighborhood, seems like she's kind of running from a secretive or dark past, and she gets involved with one of the rich men in the neighborhood, and it's kind of all about their affair, what happens when they intersect with each other's lives, but also the influence that his deceased wife has on them. Then we have This Close to OK by by Lisa Cross Smith and this follows a therapist who is driving one day and ends up stopping a man from jumping off a bridge to attempt suicide and it is the story of what happens when the two of them cross paths, how their perspectives change one another and help them heal. And finally we have The Office of Historical Corrections by Danielle Evans and this is a collection of short stories and novellas that follow very different people and their experiences with race and America. So it has lots of different stories about grief, humor, loss, love, and so much more and how they tie back into racial identity and America's history. So these are all of Book of the Month's December choices. I have to say I'm interested in a lot of these but I have particularly been looking for a Christmas read during this time of year so I think In a Holidays might be the first one I try out. And if you were interested in any of these titles as well, Book of the Month is hosting a very special promotion for the first time ever where if you use the code BOOKWISH at checkout through the link in the description, you can get your first box for only $5. $5 for one of these brand new hardcovers, that is a deal you can literally find nowhere else. I'm always really pleased with Book of the Month's choices, I've read a ton of favorites from them, so if you're interested in trying them out, now is definitely the time. So without further ado, let's check out your prompts and see what books I can find on my bookshelves. Alrighty, so the first prompt just fell on the floor, so I guess we'll go with that one. Find a book where the protagonist is over six feet tall. I think I might actually know of a pretty good one for that. This is the only one I think where I'm confident the main character is over six feet. Ramona Blue by Julie Murphy. Now I have not read this book yet, but if I am correct, I remember them saying that Ramona is over six feet tall, she's got blue hair, and I believe the story follows her as she is coping with the effects of her King Katrina on her life but also kind of exploring more about her sexual orientation and questioning what labels she's always identified with. 
a book that starts with Q. That's an interesting one. I feel like there are not many books that start with Q. Oh, but I found one. Of course, because there's like 7,000 YA titles that start with the word queen. I'm going with Queen of Volts by Amanda Foodie, which is the final book in the Shadow Game series. And this is definitely going to be one of my next fantasy reads because I'm so excited to see how the story and the characters pan out. A book with a pun in the title. This is making me question like, what actually is a pun? Oh, I wonder if this could count. This might be a pun. I'm still not entirely sure what a pun is right now. <laughs> a Study in Charlotte by Brittany Cavallero. This is like a modern retelling of Sherlock Holmes and John Watson following their descendants. <laughs> okay, wait, actually, I don't know if this works. So the main character's name is Charlotte, which is why it's in the title. And so initially my line of thinking was like, oh, like Charlotte is like a place, but this book does not take place in a city called Charlotte. But it is kind of a twist on the Sherlock Holmes title, A Study in Scarlet. Not sure if that fully works for this one, but I feel like that's the best I've got. A book that gives you Lil Peep vibes. We all know I have a deep love for the artist Lil Peep, but I have no clue what book out of my collection could possibly give me Lil Peep vibes. Okay, I think this is the best we've got. I'm going to go with Death Note, not necessarily because the story of Death Note I feel reflects anything about Lil Peep or his music, but because I know for a fact that Lil Peep loved anime all throughout his life and I definitely recall him talking about Death Note at some point. Next is the oldest book on your shelf. So I think I'm going to interpret this as like the book I have owned the longest versus like the oldest published book. I feel like my middle grade books might be the best to go because a lot of these do come from my childhood. I feel like it's either going to be between Stargirl or Chasing Redbird. I did get both of these like passed down to me through my sister when she was a child but I feel like Chasing Redbird is probably a little bit older. So I'm going with Chasing Redbird by Sharon Creech, and this is like a childhood favorite of mine. It follows a young girl named Zinni who is one of like 12 kids in her family, so she's never gotten a lot of attention and doesn't really stand out. But she discovers an old overgrown trail that starts on her family's farm and like makes it her mission to uncover it all the way to the end, so it's all about her journey with that and like how it relates to her finding something that is entirely her own really for the first time in her life. And I would really love to read this book soon because it's been so long since I read it, but it really touched my heart as a child. And I think I read it a couple of times when I was younger. So I think it would be a fun one to reread. A book with a character who has an animal sidekick. Uh, ooh, I think I have the perfect one for this. I am choosing Three Dark Crowns by Kendara Blake. And this is a fantasy that is set in a world where there are different types of magic. There is magic over elements, magic over nature, and then magic over poisons. But in this world, the people who have magic over nature end up getting like, kind of like an animal sidekick. It's called a familiar and it's an animal that they have a strong connection with. So that was definitely the first I thought of. A book written by three or more authors. Could like an anthology work for that one? I feel like that might be a good one to choose. I picked Our Stories, Our Voices, which is edited by Amy Reed, and this is an anthology written by like 21 YA authors. Wow, that's a lot. And it's all about being a woman, growing up as a woman in America, and the different types of experiences you can have. I'm recognizing like Sona Sharapatra, Brandi Colbert, Maureen Gu, Ellen Hopkins, Sandhya Manan, Amber Smith, who I adore. So there's definitely a lot more authors on here, and I just really don't reach for anthologies all that often, but this is another one that I definitely want to read at some point. A book you threw across a room because you felt so many feelings. You know, as you do as a reader. Ooh, I just want to find this book, but I feel like I have a good one. So I'm going with P.S. I Still Love You by Jenny Han, and this is the sequel, the second book in the To All the Boys I've Loved Before series. Okay, so maybe I have it wrong, and it wasn't a physical book that I necessarily threw across the room, but I was listening to the audio version, 
and I was just getting so frustrated with the main couple and like what was going on in their story that I basically like threw my phone down and I was like, I can't listen to the audiobook anymore. I'm going to fly through the physical copy because I just need this book to be over. I need to know what happens. I need there to be a happy ending. But yeah, I was so frustrated that I was like, I cannot listen to this book in this format anymore. I need to just speed through it and like get to the end. Then next we have a sapphic fantasy Ooh, i have one that i have not read yet but i have a favorite that i think needs to be my choice if you're a long time watcher of my channel you know that my choice has to be of fire and stars by audrey cole thirst and this is a story about two princesses that fall in love but the issue is that one of them is engaged to the other's brother as a part of like a political alliance marriage i adored this book so much denna and mare the two main characters just have like such a strong electric connection that it really reshaped like the standards of what i expect from a romance in books like forever it's totally because of denna and mare a book with chapter titles or a table of contents Okay, so I feel like I've gotten this one before in like a different bookshelf challenge and I always go to Rick Riordan because he has like such interesting and funny different titles and there's always a table of contents, but I feel like I want to mix it up. Oh, I wonder if Hollow Pox does because that's my current read. Yes, they do. Hollow Pox, The Hunt for Morgan Crow by Jessica Towsend is the third book in the Nevermore series. And I love this series. It's a super fun, magical, and whimsical middle grade. And I'm currently listening to the audiobook. I just love the audio versions. I think it's Gemma Whelan who does the narration and she does a fantastic job. And I specifically thought of this book because in the audio version, at the end of every chapter, there is like a sound or some music and it just really adds to the experience. Next prompt is a book with a main character with the same name as your elementary school best friend. That's a really unique one. So thinking of some of my elementary school best friends, we have Michelle, we have Gabby, we have Rachel, Ashley, and Kristen. So I have a couple, but I feel like the problem is, and disagree with me if you must, I feel like authors, especially like fantasy authors, but even contemporary authors, they always pick like very obscure names. <laughs> like it's never Tiffany, it's always Anastasia, am I right? I feel like my best bet is a contemporary, but I have no clue what one I wanna choose. <laughs> Maguire, am I wrong? God, what am I gonna do? This one has seven main characters. Maybe one of them will be correct. Oh, but there's not even like a list. Miri, Soleil, and Penny. I don't think I've ever met anyone with these three names. <laughs> What am I gonna do? Why is this hard? Ooh, oh my gosh, I think I found the perfect one. I said I had a best friend named Michelle, right? Becoming by Michelle Obama. Although this is nonfiction, Michelle Obama is clearly the protagonist of her own life, so it definitely counts. A book with a character most like your significant other. <laughs> I have a great answer for this one. So as I stated, I'm dating a man named Jake who has been in a couple of my videos and is on my Instagram and whatnot. And I have made the perfect determination that he's the combination of three characters from the Shadowhunter world. So I am going with Ghosts of the Shadow Market by Cassandra Clare, Sarah Reese Brennan, Maureen Johnson, Kelly Link, and Robin Wasserman because I believe all three of those characters are in different novellas in this story. So I like to say that at the base, Jace is like, <laughs> Jace, oh no! Jake is like Simon because Simon is a musician and Jake is a musician and I just feel like they are both funny and a little bit dorky. Then Jake is like Jace because he has the same like coolness factor, suaveness. And then finally, I like to say that Jake is like Anna Lightwood because despite being from very different centuries and walks of life, they both share the same distaste for gender norms and refuse to adhere to them. So I feel like they identify really closely with one another. A title with all the vowels and Jake has written a little note that I get a bonus point if it includes the sometimes Y. Ooh, okay. A... E I O U Y. Wow, that was really easy. I saw a long title and I was like, we might as well try it. And it happened to be a very good choice 
which is an absolutely remarkable thing by Hank Green. There is multiple A's, multiple E's, an I, an O, a U, and a Y. And it was a fabulous book that I recommend you read. All right, they are not all going to be that easy for sure. <laughs> a book you read in one day. Now, I honestly don't read a ton of books in one day. Just because as I've gotten older, I have like less time to read a book in like one sitting. So I kind of consider any book that I can read like over the course of two days and get really invested in and like prioritize reading, I often will consider that a book I read in one day. I could use an absolutely remarkable thing because I read that for my 24 hour reading vlog, but I feel like I should choose something that wasn't like specifically intended to read in one day. Oh, this one for sure. I am choosing Heroin by Mindy McGinnis and this is about a young softball star who gets into a car accident and as a result end up developing an addiction to opioids. I started this book really on a whim. I had been wanting to read it for a while, but it mostly intrigued me because of the portrayal of teenage substance abuse. And so I started it like one afternoon and I got so invested in it that when I picked it up again the next morning, I like refused to leave bed or do anything until I finished it. I would think I'm correct in saying that I did read this book in a 24 hour period. So I think that counts as being read in one day but it was just so engaging and I felt very connected to the main character and like I literally refused to do anything until I finished it. A book that starts with the word when. I feel like that one shouldn't be too hard, but when I say that I am often wrong. Why can't it be when the crawdads sing instead of where the crawdads sing? All right, when, when, when? When am I going to find this book? <laughs> Come on, I feel like there's gotta be a book that's like, when you tell me you love me, when the day is over. I have a book called The How and the Why. Why can't it be the why and the when? Dang it. <laughs> this should not be this hard. Oh, found it. It's always when I'm just about to give up. When We Collided by Emery Lord. This is a book that I have just like not read for no reason. Like I know you can relate to that. There have been many books that have been on your TBRs for many years and it's like, when am I gonna read it? <laughs> A book that matches your current outfit. Ooh, I love this one because I love my outfit today. <laughs> Something orange and black. Oh, there's flames. That could be something to work, but it doesn't exactly match my outfit. I feel like Catching Fire should have some flames. Apparently not. It's kind of misleading. Ooh, this is perfect. Burn by Patrick Ness. It has the orange and the red and the yellows and the flames. This is a cute fit though. Can anyone say books as outfits? A book given by a subscriber. Oh, I love this one too. I'm really lucky that I've gotten a lot of books gifted to me by subscribers. The first ones that come to mind are my massive collection of foreign editions of City of Bones. But I feel like that's like such an easy one. So maybe I can find a different one. Ooh, this is an interesting one. Darius the Great is Not Okay by Adib Karam. Now, this is another book I haven't read yet, another one that seems to have a kind of mental health theme as it follows a teen boy who is dealing with depression and he goes to Iran for the first time to spend time with his family and it really helps him like find himself and also maybe cope with some of the things he's going through. Kind of like when we collided, there's like no reason why I haven't picked this one up, but I've been holding on to it because I think that I would enjoy it. And I remember it was sent to me by a subscriber who said that they really enjoyed it and they thought that I would too. So I definitely like to give it a chance at some point. A book with an unsatisfying ending. Okay, so I'm not gonna stand here and tell you I remember everything about this book because I don't. I read it back in 2014, but Allegiant, I definitely remember feeling kind of unsatisfied by the ending. What I remember, I didn't, uh, really resonate with a lot of the choices that the author made and overall like the ending was very far off from like the excitement and enjoyment I felt reading the first two books in this series so I think Allegiant is going to be my answer for this one. A book where characters have to quarantine very timely unfortunately. Um, I think I have the perfect answer for this though. Wilder Girls by Rory Power. But this book takes place on kind of like a remote island where there is an all-girls school and so 
as school is in session there's kind of like a plague that sort of develops on the island and it starts transforming all of the nature all of the animals and eventually the people living there so the whole school has to quarantine and it's kind of all about what happens when they are stuck in this building they're running out of resources and they're having like some really gross text things happen to them and the things that are on the island. A book you wish was taught in high school English class. This is something I think about a lot as for like a book that isn't on the curriculum, but specifically YA fiction that I feel should be included. I'm going with Challenger Deep by Neil Shusterman, not only because this book focuses on a young boy dealing with schizophrenia, which is a mental illness that is grossly misrepresented in media. I feel like having like an accurate portrayal of that and putting it in the hands of teens would offer a lot of education and sympathy for people dealing with that illness. But really my reason for choosing it is it is a National Book Award winner. It is a fabulous, fantastic book and it is very literary in the way that it is written. Essentially half the book kind of takes place like in the modern world and following the main character as he spirals into this illness and, and really loses touch with reality but the other half of it takes place on a ship. And so like the ship isn't real and what happens on the ship is reflecting what happens in the main character's real life. And so I think it offers a lot of room for analysis and discussion and like could really teach kids to read critically. Uh, a book cover that matches Jake's nails. And so Jake left me a note to text him for a picture of what his nails look like today. All right, I don't think he's working right now, so let me give him a call. Wow, an absolute asshole. Okay, so that one we're gonna have to wait on until Jake is able to send me a picture. For the meantime, let's go with a title with exactly six words. One, two, three, four, five. One, two, three, four, five. Oh God, they're all gonna be five. One, two, three, four, five. One, two, three, four, five, six. Oh my gosh, wait, I totally was not expecting that. I had given up halfway through. I was like, oh, this is only gonna be five, but it was six. I feel like now I have to double check that. One, two, three, four, five, six, yes. History is All You Left Me by Adam Silvera. This is one of my favorite Adam Silvera books and it follows a boy whose ex-boyfriend has recently tragically passed in an accident. And so he's coping with that grief while also sort of getting involved and like connecting with his ex's most recent boyfriend who is the only person that he can really relate to and knows what he's going through. Ooh, I think Jake is calling me back. Why do you just have an accordion in your face? <laughs> You're writing a song on it. Okay, well, can you can you use those those pretty keys to showcase uh, what nails I need to use for my for my video? Hi, everybody. Hello. Bam. They are black with purple and green shirt. Ooh, that's so pretty. Okay, so for a better view, this is what Jake's nails look like. And I somehow need to find a book that is going to fit that. <laughs> I feel like part of me also wants to like focus on the like shimmery, like fade, iridescentness of it. Ooh, would this one fit? Okay, I feel like this is pretty good. There's just not as much black as I'd want, but I feel like it still works. So I am choosing Pretty Girls by Karen Slaughter because it has that kind of teal on top, it fades to purple, and then like a dark blackish color on the bottom. And I feel like the shimmeriness on the cover and like how metallic it is also reflects the polish. So I think I'm gonna send Jake a picture and see if I have his approval and maybe I'll have to find another. For the record, when I sent Jake the picture of Pretty Girls, he said, oh my god, what? That's perfect. How did you do that? All right, so next up we have a book with bisexual representation. I love this one. Let us head on over to my gorgeous rainbow LGBT contemporary shelf. How to Make a Wish by Ashley Herring Blake. Now, this is a book I was actually sponsored to review a couple of years ago. And it's really stuck with me all through this time. It's like a contemporary I really love and would love to see more people reading. It follows a young girl named Grace who has a really complicated relationship with her mother. Her mother is an alcoholic. They've never really been able to stay in one place and they move around a lot to accommodate for her mom's new boyfriends. And so one summer Grace meets a girl who admits that she likes girls and it causes Grace to kind of reflect on everything she's previously known about her identity while 
also dealing with the different conflicts that come in from her mother. And I really wanted to choose this book for this question because as someone who is bisexual, I read this book before I had really come to terms with my own identity, but I resonated a lot with Grace and her story of someone who identified as heterosexual for all their life and then started to piece together some signs that they might not have realized in the past. It's also written by a bisexual author and just has like some really well-developed characters and super unique and well-rounded character relationships. I think it's fabulous. I think more people should read it. And we just, we love all the buys in this house. <laughs> a book you think changed your perspective about things? I like this question. I have so many books that change my perspective on things. I feel like a lot of them are often contemporaries because they allow me to like read about characters different from myself and like see the world through their perspective. I'm gonna choose The Way I Used to Be by Amber Smith and this is the story of a young girl who is raped in her bedroom by her brother's best friend when she is 14 and so it follows her throughout all four years of high school and is kind of all about how that trauma and especially that secret that she has never told anyone else really shapes her as she grows up. This book was an absolute whirlwind for me. It's one of my favorite contemporaries. And I feel like there it's hard for me to determine exactly like where and why this book changed my perspective on things, but I really felt that I came out of it with a different view. And I feel like with a closed-minded perspective, it would be very easy to look down on this character and judge her for her actions, but because of the context of this story and this being a story about a young girl dealing with trauma, it really caused me to step outside of my own experiences and what I would maybe do in these situations and think of it as how like her entire life has been changed and her view of relationships and people and whatnot is entirely different because of her rape. So I don't really know if that explains it well, but I definitely felt changed coming out of this book and it really changed how I view all characters, I guess. It makes me really want to think more about what is the experience behind this character? Why are they doing the things that they're doing and thinking the thoughts that they are? As opposed to just coming from my perspective. Ooh, this is like a double one. It says, boring premise, great execution, or great premise, poor execution. I feel like I don't typically pick up a book that has a boring premise going into it because that means that I probably wouldn't be interested in it. Huh. That's an interesting one. I think I'm gonna go with Dry by Neil Schusterman and Jared Schusterman, his son, for great premise, poor execution. And I wouldn't necessarily say like, poor is maybe a really harsh word because I did really enjoy this book. So this book has a setup of a future of America where water scarcity is a problem. So the people of the country are already used to like water being shut off in order to conserve it. But in this book, the, I believe it's Los Angeles completely shuts off water so there's no running water and it's all about like how our human instincts take over and how far people will go for one last drop. Definitely super interesting premise, but the things that stand out to me is number one, the characters were not all that interesting, and I feel like that really ties into execution. Like, you can have a brilliantly planned book, but if your characters can't hold on to it, the story isn't going to rise to the occasion. And the other thing that I wanted a little bit more from in this book is, like, it feels like this kind of dystopian, even though it's not, and it doesn't try to be, but what I kept thinking in this book is that, like, there are so many people in our world that do not have water right now and it's not necessarily a dystopia it is just the life that they live where they don't have access to clean water or to drinking water and it's difficult for them to achieve those resources and i don't want to say that jared schusterman and neil schusterman were ignorant to that because i did go to their sighting for it and i heard them talk about dry and they really have a strong environmental message behind this book but it was just very very American centric to a problem that is currently facing lots of people outside of America. So I feel like I just really would have wanted more attention to that and it would have made the book a lot stronger. That said, it was still an interesting read and I did really enjoy it. I was just definitely left wanting a lot more. Ooh, a book you have an unpopular opinion on. So this could be a book that I really liked that a lot of people didn't like or a book that I did not like that everyone did like. Ooh, this is an interesting one though. Okay. I'm going with The Ballad of Songbirds and Snakes by Suzanne Collins. So this you may have heard of is the prequel to The Hunger Games that was just recently released this year and follows President Snow as a teen. And so this book faced 
a lot of backlash before it was even out. Like when the book was announced, people were really pissed about it. And then it came out and a lot of people were equally pissed and very disappointed. And I'm not here to say that I loved this book and I think it's flawless because that is so not true. I gave it like a solid three star rating. There are a lot of problems with it. It does not hold up to the Hunger Games at all. But that said, I really enjoyed my time reading it. It was fun. Uh, you know, when I go into like a prequel or a sequel or a spinoff that is written many years later from a favorite series of mine, what I'm really looking for in that is to be brought back into that world. And that's what this book did so fantastically. Like I read it and I felt like I was reading The Hunger Games for the first time. I rewatched all of the movies and so it was just a really good overall experience. I was definitely frustrated with a lot of the book and I feel like like every constructive aspect of it does pale in comparison to the original trilogy. But people like really hated this book and I am just not one of them. So I think I liked it a lot more than many people who did read it. A book between 324 and 387 pages. These are always so difficult in these bookshelf challenges. Get to count in pages. Nope, that's over 400. So a little bit shorter. What about Warcross? A 353. Okay, not as hard as I was thinking, but Warcross by Marie Lu is 300 and I forgot how many pages and I just said it. <laughs> 353 pages. Now, I really loved Warcross. This was one of my favorite books of the year it came out and it was just so fun and engaging. And then Wild Card was a wild disappointment. So I just kind of like to pretend that Warcross is a standalone and I will not be taking any other questions at this time. A book with the moon on the cover. I have the perfect one for this. <laughs> so the last time I did a challenge like this, this was also a prompt. And I had so much trouble with finding a moon on the cover apparently that I chose like the tiniest little crescent moon that could possibly be on a book cover, but I stand by it because it was a moon on the cover. And then y'all made fun of me because the book after that prompt, I picked up The Invention of Hugo Cabret by Brian Selznick, which has a pretty nice sized moon on it. I didn't know, okay? I picked up, what was it? The Devouring Grey first. A book with an author you have met, and Jake has given me a guideline that it cannot be a Cassie Clare book. So I have met many an author on my shelf, but this is the first one that I saw, so we're gonna go with that. And that is For Renegades by Marissa Meyer. Marissa Meyer is definitely one of my favorite YA authors, especially in like the fantasy, science fiction genre. I met Marissa Meyer for the first time at Y'all Fest of I think 2015. And then I saw her again because I had the amazing opportunity to interview her on my channel. So if you're interested in watching that interview, I definitely recommend it out. It was so, so exciting for me. And then in 2019, I met her for, I think it was the release of Supernova. I had gone to her signing then again. So I met Marissa Meyer a couple of times and I love her and her books and Renegades is one of my favorite series. So yeah, that's the one I chose. Ooh, a book with all the letters of your name in the title, and Jake's stipulation is that it has to have the double M. E-M-M-A in a title. <laughs> Ooh, okay, this is easy. <laughs> what better title for my name than Emma by Jane Austen? I feel like I should get double points for it being in the exact order of my name and like actually being my name. <laughs> a book you want Jake to read. Ooh, that's a really good one. I have so many books I want Jake to read. The Mortal Instruments is a given because anyone who's important to me in my life, I want them to read The Mortal Instruments. I feel like he would like War Cross, which I already used. Um, and I did also want him to read An Absolutely Remarkable Thing and he wanted to read it as well, but I also already used that one. Ooh, perfect answer. I am choosing The Seven Husbands of Evelyn Hugo by Taylor Jenkins Reid, which is an all-time favorite book of mine, like a book that changed my life and one that I will definitely recommend to everyone regardless of your reading preferences. So for Jake and I's first date, he had recently moved into a new apartment for the first time and so I wanted to get him like a little housewarming gift. So I actually bought him his very own copy of Daisy Jones and the Six by Taylor Jenkins Reid and he did read it and absolutely loved it. So he had a lot of great conversation about this book and so I would really love for him to read The Seven Husbands of Evelyn Hood 
<laughs> what was that? The Seven Husbands of Evelyn Hugo because I feel that not only are they written by the same author but I feel like they explore some similar themes and I just feel like he'd really enjoy it. And I actually had an extra copy of The Seven Husbands of Evelyn Hugo and I gave it to Jake because like I really want him to read it. I only just remembered that now. So he has like no excuse at this point I feel. And for our last prompt we have a book you thought you wouldn't like but ended up loving. This is a great question as well. Again though, I don't often pick up books that like I don't think I will like. Like I want to pick up books that I believe that I will like. Oh, that like just grazed my toe. I chose Six of Crows by Leigh Bardugo. Now it's not that like I went into Six of Crows thinking that I would hate it or anything. It's just that when I read it, I was not very accustomed to high fantasy. I had really only read a handful and I always found them super dense and difficult for me to connect to and I like really heavily and strongly avoided high fantasy. I still kind of do. <laughs> I had listened to the audiobook of Six of Crows which was a full cast audio recording and I had so many friends that loved Six of Crows that I wanted to give it a chance and I absolutely fell in love. I feel like some part of me definitely knew that I was going to love Six of Crows, but I was definitely apprehensive about it in the beginning and felt there was a big chance that like it was just going to go over my head because of how I felt about high fantasy. So if you're someone like me that is also like that, that doesn't like to pick up high fantasy because it just feels like so much for you, Six of Crows is one I would definitely recommend. The characters are just so well-rounded and they really connect with you and the story is very exciting and action-packed as well so I feel like it's definitely one that could surprise a lot of others as well. So that really concludes this bookshelf scavenger hunt. I really hope you guys enjoyed watching because I had so much fun filming. Thank you again to everyone who sent me prompts that were chosen and I'm sorry if I wasn't able to include yours but this was a really fun video and one I would definitely consider doing again in the future. I wasn't necessarily intending for this to be like a challenge for others like I just wanted to do it for myself but if you are interested and you liked these prompts and want to see if you can maybe find some of these books on your bookshelves I'll leave all of them in the description below but that is it for this video thank you guys so much for watching and I will see you soon for a new one bye